Informed Cat. Uh, today, we got a pretty special show for you, I'm not gonna lie. Um, someone who I am a big fan of, everyone, the things he built, uh, doing his, you know, being a producer, named Brendan Clancy from Barstool Sports, uh, the producer for KFC Radio. Great guy. Um, I, you know, I honestly just want to pick his brain about producing stuff, how to get in the doors of Barstool. And uh, he sat down with me for 45 minutes. He, I had him up over Twitter DMs and we kind of just like, you know, shot the shit. I wasn't really expecting to record, but uh, we sat down. He was like, hey, I'm going to record. Maybe end up on my podcast. I was like, sure. Like, I'm going to do the same and I, I'm going to throw you on mine as well. So uh, it was kind of like perfect little storm. We had, a, you know, I just asked him for like 15, 20 minutes of his time. He ended up giving me almost 30. 40 minutes. So uh, that was awesome. So I, you know, I kind of just like hop right into chatting with him. So I didn't really get to give a proper introduction, but I just want to do that now. Again, KFC Radio, Brendan Clancy. Uh, make sure you, you guys are watching on YouTube. Subscribe, please ring the notification bell. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you follow, download the episode, do all that fun stuff. Really, really appreciate it. All right, guys, hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. The following is brought to you in partnership by Symbol. Symbol is a new sports marketplace where you can trade shares of professional teams like stocks. You love sports. You interested in fantasy sports without the weekly annoyance of fantasy league upkeep. Then Symbol's the app for you. With Symbol, fantasy sports is going to a whole other level. How it works is simple. You buy Symbol shares for your favorite Sim teams on the app. When your Sim team wins, you get automatic cash deposits and you don't lose any money when they lose. That's it. So if you follow trends across football, basketball, and baseball, and you think your team is a sleeper, simply invest in your favorite sim teams on Symbol and watch your virtual portfolio prove you right or wrong. And if you want to get in on the action right away, Vendetta Sports Media's got you covered. Go to symbol.app forward slash vendetta and use our exclusive promo code VENDETTA and you'll get a $10 bonus when making your first deposit. Symbol. Taking fantasy sports to a whole other level. All right, so I don't even. So first of all, thank you. I appreciate uh, getting back to me so quickly. We've, we've had a few DMs going back and forth, but um, so I kind of I have a few separate questions. So the first one is, I guess, like the way that it was portrayed to me throughout, like the years of following bar stools, the best way to get a job and to get your foot in the door just by like creating your own content Mm -hmm. and doing stuff like that so um i got an internship uh, at the start of the semester some like a startup similar to what barstool was everyone's remote doing their own thing um when you say like barstool like like content creation entertainment wise yeah so it's called vendetta sports media it's like uh primarily it's it's sports space you know there are a lot of people that are like hardcore into sports analytics like draft coverage like all there's a bunch of different people but i'm mm-hmm. more like uh i'm more like far from the hip guy i'm not i'm less in, i mean i'm a like diehard mets fan mets jets like i live the same painful mm-hmm. life that you guys live. Um, <laughs> it's not easy man nah, i mean it's good for content though you know i mean if you're if you're just like a i, I feel like the worst case scenario the best case scenario is to win championships the worst case scenario is to be like a, a team that like kind of finishes near the top a few times but then it gets better when it's just like absolute tragedy and you you know have something to scream and yell about but for content of for content of course no i 100 percent agree but as opposed to like actual day-to-day stuff right right, different you know (laughs) um so is that would you still like kind of suggest that's the way to like get in like by doing your own stuff because my situation was i came to this place and i wanted to be like I wanted to do like what Nick does and like Mm -hmm. behind the scenes, like what you do behind the scenes, editing video, cutting it up, like making promotions, trailers, all that stuff. Um, The difficult part is that obviously we're not in, you know, everything's work from home and I can't get into a place Mm -hmm. to learn where the actual studio equipment or anything semi-professional. So I've been kind of just doing stuff on my own, but I guess my first question would be like, what? So I do everything in iMovie right now and it's not very, um, not very efficient, I would say. There's mm-hmm. minimal you yeah, can do. Yeah, iMovie is like it, it's it it's started. The, but... Yes, yeah, it's, it's the kindergarten version of what it is. Right. And yeah, um, yeah. so, would you suggest, like? Do you think it's like a lateral move would be to go to Final Cut, or you think it's just go do the Adobe Suite? 
No, uh, I would definitely say Final Cut is not a lateral move for my movie. Final Cut is definitely a step up. I like, um, I like Adobe. Um, I kind of learned on Premiere, but I think Hank uses Final Cut. So like you can absolutely do, if you're doing video, I like that, uh, you know, um, Adobe has all these other things like, you know, After Effects is like the step up. I'm not sure if Final Cut can do the stuff that After Effects can do. But if you learn on Premiere and then you want to step up to After Effects, it's not, it's like, you know, all in like, uh, like streamlined sort of thing that works with each other. You can edit the audio of videos in Audition. You know, you learn Photoshop. It's just like a, a very robust, they have something called Character Animator where, you know, that's hard as shit. But like, if you want to make your own cartoon, you can do that. So I, that's the reason I, I think if you just study the Adobe cloud, it's the way to go. But if for some reason, when you're talking about editing video, I definitely think that Final Cut is a big step up from iMovie. Um, you just have to, I don't know, it's between the two of those. I, I personally recommend the Adobe Suite, but um, you get to either of those, then you're at that level where you're you're doing like, at least what a, a decent amount of producers at Barstool do. The ones who want to go above and beyond like quigs are doing after effects and and like some really advanced shit um and again like if you can lock in on after effects if you can really learn that i think you'll have a job at many places um you know there is still the marketing to it like you have to make the right stuff like there are plenty of people who know how to do um after effects and like maybe work at like a studio somewhere and they don't know that if they just, you know, tweak this and make it funny and make it a meme and make it whatever is popular right now. And they use After Effects on that rather than like, oh, how do I like animate this graphic for a Fortune 500 company's commercial? You know, it's like those are all skills that like the same people have the same skills, but some people think more of like the barstool way. Like, how do I make this popular? How do I make this funny? How do I make this relatable? Um, that's where learning these skills and knowing how to do things in a sort of content creator way, which if you're a big fan of Barstool, I think you already like somewhat get, it's not just like you instantly can unlock it and do it. But um, I think it's a blend of the two that help you get there. But if you learn those skills and can apply it in a sort of popular way, um, you know, I've been trying to figure out After Effects for a while, but you know, when you're not working or when you're working somewhere you don't really want to work anymore, if you can take the time and put in 20, 30, 40, like hours over the course of a few weeks, like treat it like school, you know, like, oh, right. I'm, I'm giving myself a class on this because there's a lot of stuff available, even for free, but um, there are courses on it um, if you learn that. So, but when you say like, you know, the best way is to create stuff, there's a few differences nowadays, like, it's a little bit more of like a regular company. Now I don't really have, I don't, I'm not really in charge of like hiring, like every now and then we have a pretty decent team at KOC radio. Right. Um, Building that out. Nick, Jackie, Zach, like everybody like, but you know, then we'll add another layer of stuff. And as we get back to the office, there's going to be more and more to do. Um, so if we like try and roll out another show, then we can go to somebody like Sean or Gaz and say, Hey, do you have any, you know, people in the pipeline, because we're looking to do more social here, like we're looking to do TikTok better. So it's like, you have to try and get in the, the traditional pipeline um, of a company. Well, you don't have to, but it's, it's a little bit more like that. Whereas right. as opposed to you just know, sending even, DMs in the past, like, 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 I don't know, like I've done in the past. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, you, you know, like, and it's not like even that far away, like um, Logan, who now runs basically YouTube for Logan Spence runs YouTube for Barstool and was the like basically like the executive producer of Surviving Barstool. Like he got Kev's attention by just like making funny compilations and good videos and like sending them to Kev, like not even really asking for a job. I don't think he was just like, look, I made this. This is awesome. And Kev was like, this is really good. Like, what are you up to? And it led to things. Now, you know, um, it's a little bit more traditional. But if you still were to make like a standout thing, like look at McKenzie. Um, she was Great story. making those yeah. lip syncing things. Like we, you know, what Barcel does a little, I, I'm not, I don't even know really. I don't know exactly what they do, but I know that Erica would think along these lines. So she probably has a list of like, how do we figure out how do we get Barstool more involved in TikTok? How do we get Barstool more involved in Clubhouse? How do we how do we pre predict what the next thing is going to be and maybe make our own version of it and put it on the Barstool app before anybody else figures it out? She's like, 
you know, thinking like that. But even no matter how smart you are, you can't necessarily say, you know, we need like a young girl who will do lip dubs of spit and chiclets. Like right. just nobody's going to know that that is what we need right now. And Mackenzie just did it and it was hysterical. And it's just like, okay, this is like, you're basically hired, you know? And sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes people come into the Barcelona universe and, and then go out. But um, if you still just make good stuff, you know, and it resonates, like there, there really still is a chance. Now you're talking more behind the scenes though, right? Like, so, yeah, I mean, uh, my like goal and I, I mean, I, I see myself as a behind the scenes type person. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I applied for this internship with that in mind. However, um, the way it worked out was that, you know, I'm able to do that stuff, but there was more of a need for just like more content. So I, mm -hmm. you know, I went, I'm, I feel like I'm like early days bar. So I'm back and blogging every day. I've been here 10, 10 weeks while I'm in school and working. Mm -hmm. I, and I've gone like 175 blogs. I do, I started my own podcast. And, but the only reason I even started my own podcast was because I wanted to just learn how to be vet, better editing a video and, and, you know, audio video. I want to like learn that stuff. And I, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of like in a weird spot where, cause I'm still an intern and I'm still in school and I have like my prior obligations, but I, I'll kind of just transition this, but like, so I, right now I do my show twice a week. I record Mondays and Thursdays. The shows come out Tuesday and Friday. Um, I don't know if it's too much because every episode length is different. I try and have like an, I try and interview someone and then work around it. I mean, I don't know. You definitely have not seen it, but like I did have, I had Jeff to do on right when things were okay. going, I think right when things were going crazy with him and he, I mean, he's a whole nother story, but uh, <laughs> that dude is insane. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, do you think for like a smaller podcast or like a one that's starting up, do you think one episode a week where it's more focused and more like script, not scripted, but you know, you have more segments planned out in advance or mm -hmm. you think like, it's not like a question of like quality over quantity, but I guess it kind of ultimately frames down, comes down to that. Yeah. Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head with what, when you said like you want to get better at making content. So, so that's why you're doing it. Um, it, it Cause it's, it, I think of it as like two separate questions because if, if you're looking to do like behind the scenes and um, looking to like refine a skill to the point where you think you could make something really good for like Big Cat if you were given the opportunity. I, I always had this idea one time I wanted to do something like um, like uh, producer Olympics or like producer Hunger Games or something like that where like for a week or two, we just jumble up the teams and we have like different producers work with different talent and we just say make something in a week, like make a, uh, and it, maybe it'll get Greenland, maybe something amazing will come out of it, but maybe it'll just be like one offs and we'll have all this weird content where it's just like, you know, different people are working with different groups. But so say like, you know, we had that and it was almost like Barstool Idol, but for, for producers, if it was just like, okay, you, now you're, you're pretty good. You know how to film, you know how to edit, you, you have some kind of comedic timing, you have an idea and you get access to Big Cat for like, a few hours and you're just like, do something, make something like if you, if you feel like you are, are at that point, um, great. Like then you're on the right track. If you're not, then I would just say, keep making enough stuff and with yourself as the, as a talent to give you an opportunity to be like, how did I make this better? Because like right now you might be a really funny guy, but there's certain things like, you know, Barstool, there's a little bit of a luck element, you know, like Kev, Dan, John, I mean, like, Dave now seems like an icon, but like to an extent, they were all just like really regular guys. They were, they were pretty funny, but they weren't like, oh my God, this guy is like destined for absolute greatness or even like the level that they're at now. They were like relatable and good and, and, and then um, things just sort of worked their way out. So you might be funny, but like, it, it, so these are the two options. It's like, you, you can just keep working on it and get better from like a, a behind the scenes standpoint. Or if you're thinking like, I want to make a, I think my show is going to be good enough. Like, I think I'm going to be funny enough. I think I'm going to be entertaining enough. Then you need to think of it from like the creative aspect where you're like, am I, is this good? Am I putting this out? Is this funny? You know, it's like a stand up comedian won't go up there and tell like every single joke that's ever gone through his head. He's working on a set. He's right. like, this set works. I, this joke 
flows into this story, works out to this callback. That is a very creative process. So I think you can go quality if you're like, I'm trying to make the best show here. I do a, a, a Mets podcast. And I'm trying to make it the best Mets podcast to the point that it gets picked up by Barstool. Then you think a little bit more quality and you say like, Let, I'm not going to rush this. This part's funny or I'm only going to do it 30 minutes, but they're going to be the best 30 minutes about that really like sums up the Mets um, week or whatever. Or if it's a comedy podcast, you're like, I'm going to record for an hour, but I'm going to cut out you know, 15 minutes that wasn't funny. I'm going to only put out the best stuff. That's if you're trying to make a show that you're like, I think that this is going to be good enough to get picked up. If you're trying to like work on just being a content creator, then that's where I think you can go a little bit more quantity because that gives you more experience. You learn more, you edit more, you, you know, say, okay, like this week I'm going to do my podcast, but I'm going to focus on making TikTok promos. And the only way I'm going to get good at that is to make like 10 TikTok promos for this podcast. And the only way I'm going to be able to make 10 is if I do two episodes or three episodes. So that's where it's a little bit more qual uh, quantity. And that's what I think for people who are like starting out where I'm like, yeah, what is the real vision here? Is this like, you really believe in your show? There are certain people I've had on that I'm like, you know, you have this kind of dynamic with your co-host and it's funny and you shouldn't just overexpose it by doing it too much. And there are other people who are like, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of doing a fantasy football podcast with my buddies and we're kind of just shooting the shit. And I'll be like, just keep doing it then. And then try and hit on what works. Like, oh, wow, you guys had a really funny segment when you did blah, blah, blah. You know, you guys like had a, a, a you guys really resonated. You're doing a football podcast, but when you started talking movies, it was really good. So hey, can you relate? this game that like, can you relate every week of football to one of your favorite movies? Now you have like this weird movie um, football crossover podcast. That's like an idea that you can then build around that you only stumbled upon because you're just like doing a lot of content, you know? So it's, it's, it's a blend of the two, but I would definitely say like creatively, if you're like, this show works, I want to, I just want to make it better. That's when you need to have like a little bit more of a critical eye and be like, let me not just like push everything out that I do. Yeah. I, I guess the point where I'm at is that um, I, the reason why I initially had a two shows a week is because I wanted to prove that, you know, I, I can work under like these deadlines that I created for myself that I'm, you know, <laughs> able to good, work yeah. that I'm able to work in like a, a different environment. Cause there's literally, you know, when I, signed up for my internship there was no like all right you're gonna do a podcast there was none it was none of that it was gonna be like okay just write and do like we'll send you video editing stuff on the side and i was like that's not really enough for me so mm -hmm. I, I started to do it on my own and so the the two times a week kind of felt like a, a natural way to just you know what like consistency editing like have mm -hmm. some sort of like regularity um but yeah I've, I've been debating debating that a lot the last few weeks especially because you know you have the initial like podcast like buzz where like yeah. people i know are talking about it and you know like yeah you hit the and, wall yeah right and then you, you you know you get a few people like the few interesting people you know you come on you do that and then now i'm at this point where especially like with the nfl and dead season luckily mlb picking up helps for like sports content but mm -hmm. um no I'll continue um yeah i mean like i i don't think you know consistency is important um but you know you are allowed to take a week off you are allowed to slip up you are allowed it's not the end of the world like you know a uh, super producer has been on and off for a little while and not that i'm like the gold standard but it's like i'm making progress now that i got consistent i got consistent by having emily help me out um so there's you know like things evolve and grow and change uh and you should you shouldn't just like you know give yourself like there's no reason for this like oh i'm just gonna stop this i'm just gonna stop i'm gonna go to one episode and it's just like but there's no real reason if you're like i'm burnt out or i think i can make one episode a week and it's gonna be a lot better then that's fine like it's not like you have to do two but then like you said like you know if you if you felt if you feel like it's giving you a lot of experience and you're learning more things and you're growing and like the lack of content from your internship was one of the problems and a way to address it is just to record all the time. You know, you could consider going, you could consider doing it even more. One of the things I think um, is a valuable asset is just to change up the medium. Like um, uh, what's the um, shoot. I'm blanking on the name of the app that is stereo. Stereo is another audio platform. It's live audio. I believe it records. 
and you rec can record with from one other person. It's all audio, no video. Um, and people can basically leave you uh, voice messages um, and you can play them and answer them. It's all, all in app. And when you could like, you could do that every day and just be like, you know, I, I don't necessarily try and make that um, perfect, but that's the third, I do 30 minutes every day at 7 PM as a, as a right before a Mets game or, you know, right. right after a Mets game or something like that. And then you just get a different experience there. I do think that these different mediums, I love that these things keep popping up. You know, there was a point where like once TikTok came out, I was like, we're done, right? Like there's not going to be any more social media. There's no more ideas. There's no more platforms and then stereo and then clubhouse, you know, they're like uh, more things just keep evolving. And that gives you more opportunity to be like, oh, all right, you start a podcast, but podcasts have kind of topped out. Stereo is kind of still a podcast, but it's different. You know, it's like people, there's not a lot of content there. They're amplifying certain people because they're, they want people to come in in there and create for them. They're, uh, you know, there's opportunities to make money there. And it's really like the same sort of genre. Instead of just throwing it on iTunes and Stereo um, and Spotify, you're putting it in like a different place. Twitter spaces. I think Instagram is going to roll out some kind of audio only product. Like there's lots of different places and it feels different than just a podcast. So, you know, like you could, you could experiment in places like that. You know, if you conquer stereo, you're not going to, it's not just going to be like, Oh, Barstool hired you as the stereo guy, but like, it'll help. It'll, it'll, it'll matter. You know, it'll be different, especially if you can get like a little bit of buzz there, because that's what happened with TikTok. People that adopted TikTok when it was musically and stuck with it, like they have a leg up. Now some, now the stars can all eventually jump in on it. Kind of like they did on podcasting. Like every like massive everyone comedian has, now has, has a, has a comedy now. podcast, yeah. you know, it's like, Oh, okay, great. Now we're competing with the big dogs, but like the people who were nobodies on like vine, who were just kids starting on vine are now like Logan Paul. Yeah, you know, Jake, Jake so Paul, Paul, and I mean, like, we all wish that we could be those guys. But like, if you if you are to jump on something early, and you and you kind of focus there and build a little community there, those are places that I see that might, you know, you might be able to like get a little bit of a leg up because the competition isn't as fierce in, on apps like that. You brought up you brought up Clubhouse a few times. Um, is it is it already run its course? Twitter's taken over the spaces. Like you said, Instagram's going that way. And it, like we were kind of having like a little company discussion about it uh, a few days ago. It's like, is it even worth getting in now because of what it is? And I think, I don't know how you feel about this, but like, I know, especially you, you're very much, you spot these programs and these apps well before. Yeah. I, I've heard of Musical.ly, I don't know, five, six years ago, listening to this show before it yeah, turned yeah, into TikTok. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I think that Clubhouse, like the exclusivity behind it, like kind of hurt them because I was trying to get in when you guys were first doing your, you know, oh, yeah. ASLs. But yeah. like, you know, as many times as I say, please send me an invite, I reply to the tweet. Like if I don't get one, I, I miss out yeah. on the content. And now it's like, I, I got yeah. one, two, I got one eight, one eight weeks later. Now it's like, what am I doing? I know. I think, I think that was like a gift and a curse that definitely did cause a lot of buzz. Cause it was like, Oh shoot. You know, like it seems like, it's really cool. yeah. um, and I don't know, I, I, there's some decent conversations. I find myself like every now and then I'll, I'll find like a really good clubhouse, but because it's just, it's purely live and, and there is no on demand feature when I think a lot of things are going on demand. Like, you know, somebody tells you like, Oh, did you watch this Netflix documentary? No, but I have some time and I'm going to watch it this weekend. Um, right. You know, live is is good. I think companies like Barstool are are you know capitalizing on on live, and especially when there was very few live events, but you know, no sports to contend with during quarantine, and and you know, like we we built a few things that um you know now have lasted the test of time. So I'm, uh, but I think like with Clubhouse, it's a little bit weird, um, and even Twitter Spaces. I, I'm from a producer perspective thinking like. I wish we could record this and download it and put it in other places too. But I understand that the live aspect creates this buzz. And, and I know that like for the apps, they want you to get in the, they want you on the app. So when you see one of your favorite people going live and you know, Oh shoot, I'm going to miss this. You click on it rather than like, if you just see somebody post a video and you're like, Oh, I can watch this later. But that's not to me, like it, it's, it's a little less appealing than some of the other new stuff that's come out. Now, the thing about not, paying any attention to clubhouse is that like what these companies do is innovate. I think I saw recently that Twitter either is offering or offered clubhouse $4 billion. <laughs> so it's like if clubhouse is a $4 billion company, 
like they're going to figure something out. Snapchat, like people think that Snapchat was like killed by Instagram. It was like Instagram is, you know, much bigger than it, but it, Snapchat's still around. And you can Snapchat's still- Snapchat's huge with the kids. Like I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a few years older than most like the, uh, college kids my age. I had, a, I took a few years off, but- like when I do a group project now in school, it's not like, can I get your phone number? It's like, what's your snap? It's like, right. Well, the interesting, <laughs> the interesting thing with snap is that I don't think, I think if it's like, I think it thinks of itself less as a social media app and more of a messaging app. And it's just how they, how people contact each other and, and talk back and forth. Um, and not about like followers and, and growing, but I'm sure you could right now jump on Snapchat, dedicate yourself to it and grow a following there. So it's not gone. So Clubhouse, I think, you know, if Clubhouse rolls out, like right now, if Clubhouse rolled out, like that you could download your recordings, if you were if you were the host of the Clubhouse, I would use it much more as a producer. I'm not saying that that's how the general public would operate, but I'm saying like, if I could if I could download that and and post as a podcast later, or, or, or even just post clips of it and be like, you got to catch our live, our live Clubhouses, um, so, and I think that they'll do that eventually. I, I think they said that they're recording them already. They're like, this is not, don't, you know, I think it's in like their, their terms of, and conditions and stuff like that. They're Probably. Like, yeah, we, we, we have all this information on you and we're recording all of it. Um, but, uh, you know, so I, I think, you know, that's, it's tough when you're trying to optimize your time. Um, I don't know. I see a lot of people crushing it on Clubhouse. So it's like tough to ignore. I am not as intrigued with it, especially since Barstool as a company is a big Twitter company, our strongest following totals are on Twitter and now they've got spaces. So we were doing, you know, we got to believe we were doing a, we got to believe clubhouse. And it's just like, you know, Kev has 450,000 Twitter followers. Why would we not do this on Twitter? You know, it's just, you know, it's, it, it sucks because it's just like, um, when I was saying we should, people should get on TikTok, they're like, why would we not, if we're going to do short form videos, why would we not just do it on Instagram? Why would we not just do it on Twitter? And I'm like, yeah, but it's different. So I don't want to say that Clubhouse isn't different. It does have some differences. And I do think it will be able to, you know, turn corners and innovate. And, and, and that's why it's worth spending some time on it. But right now, I, it's just not something I'm like as intrigued by, um, which probably means it'll take off and it'll, it'll be awesome soon. So I mean, keep your eye on it. Definitely don't not keep your eye on it, you know? As a, as a listener for a while. I know, I know that usually when you have your eye on something, it means that there's something to it. So I will, <laughs> I will keep a note of that. Um, I, this is a question that's a little bit more like KFC radio, uh, ask is be, I know you guys were before the pandemic were very much, you want your guests in house in studio, mm -hmm. sit down on the mic and chop it up, which I would for a bit like all visual for someone watching, consuming it. I like facial reactions. I like all that stuff. Yeah. But now that we're good, everything's on zoom or Skype or whatever, it feels, and you have to record it through whatever platform. Like you, I'm assuming you record through Zoom, right? Like yeah, you just did. usually Zoom or Streamyard. Yeah. So how do you um go back and like post? Like so, how do you do it so that you? Because for TikTok, you want like my face talking, and then when you talk, it's your face. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. for YouTube, I just take this and have the overlay. So do you like change uh, camera aspect ratios in Zoom, or like how do you, how do you kind of take this and create multiple different? You know, yeah. How do you do that? Well, if you'll see for for a lot of the stuff that we post on YouTube and and promos for KOC Radio, what what Nick does, and this was his idea, Nick Hamilton, um, he also will record the guys like sitting at the desk, and you'll see that they're looking at at a, a laptop, and then they'll cut to like Brian Cranston, and it'll right. be his Zoom view. I wish I would love if like, you know, like a producer on the celebrities end would also shoot like a second angle for us, but you know, maybe for some of our closer friends, but, um, you know, that was a very creative way that he came up with that. That was just like to add something to it. Um, but yeah, you know, visually, uh, it, like we live in like a three second world where it's just like, if, if things aren't changing, it's tough to get people's attention. If you already have their attention, because like when Kev's face comes up, fans of KFC radio are interested, right. you know? Um, but I'm, when I'm thinking outside the box, I'm thinking about tr still trying to grow the audience, which I think is what, what you're thinking about more. You got to spice it up. You got to, you got to keep it coming. So yeah, like, you know, and I'm guilty of this when I post pr promos of super producer, it's just like, you know, me and you talking in a square and it looks like a zoom call and it's, that's boring, you know? So yeah, I would, I would spice it up. You know, if you look at, um, some of the most successful TikToks, they're just so fast paced. And I think that that can work on almost everything, you know, like, 
um, on YouTube, like you can do a slower pace, but I think if you do do a, a quicker pace, especially early on to hook the viewer, I think that, yeah, you know, like punching in, punching out, moving. Um, I've seen a lot of people recording on a green screen now so that they can put something behind them uh, just because that's what Twitch does. And that's what, um, and that's what TikTok does. Like they, you know, have a lot of these green screen effects and people like associate that with popular viral things now. So, um, you know, anything that you can do to like make it more visually appealing um, helps, goes a long way. I love Twitch. Twitch is one of my, like, it's my yeah. favorite thing. I've been on it for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to do like, I, I don't know if my computer just like can't really handle it. I don't know if I have to get like a streaming PC, but like when I do it, it's so laggy. I, I was um, streaming on Apple and I don't know. I don't know if yeah. you're using Apple. Is yeah, yeah. Yeah. No one, yeah. Is it? Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. It's, I, it's, I, it's like a, yeah. it's a very well-known thing. So I was, so one of my good friends is does um graphics for Twitch streamers, he designs his own and sketch mm. and all that. And so he we were talking talking trying to talk this through the other day because mlb the show is coming out on xbox so i'm right. trying to do um, so it's uh hasn't happened in the uh, last I don't know, decade so i'm trying to my next idea is i want to do like some sort of like video game series so i would stream it on twitch and then cut it up and put it on youtube and however i do it but you yeah streaming on apple's atrocious you have to download it's called obs and work. yeah i've got obs and it just like everything just crawls like yeah. i'm just like this is and then i yeah i watched a few youtubers and they were like uh somebody was like yeah who streams on a mac and i was like fuck yeah no it's <laughs> like, streaming on right, mac so is not a thing that's good that that's world. good to know then that uh that it is the computer and i'll just like you know because there's a lot of pcs like even some decent pcs or I think it seems like somewhat more affordable, like a, a Mac, you get like a basic Mac for $2,000 where it looks like you can get like a high end streaming PC for like 1500. I was like, okay, cool. All right, maybe I'll do that. But, but yeah, PCs it like, have to do with like most of like where the PCs get crazy expensive when it comes to the capture cards and yeah. like for gaming graphics and like drivers and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So I don't, I'm not like going to play anything bumps. too heavy graphically, but I would also just like to stream and like, you know, put conversations and, put up what we're talking about. And I was like, I literally can't even do this. I tried so, to play magic, the gathering. And it was like, it was so, it was terrible. I was like, this is, this is a really bad product. So, uh, I may, I may invest in a, in like a streaming gaming PC. Almost every streamer that I watch, except for one, um, they, they all have two PCs, a gaming uh, one yeah, and a streaming yeah, yeah. one. And just so they don't run into like any issues, because if one crashes, then everything goes down yeah. and on Twitch. Like, well, all right. Well, we're going to take this one step at a time. <laughs> you know, it's like I tried to do it on a Mac and that was just like yeah, unacceptable. No. So I'll, maybe I'll get like a very basic uh, gaming slash streaming PC. And then if we get there, we'll step it up. But um, uh, yeah. we got to start first. I'm in the I'm in the same boat where I'm trying to figure out how to get take the next gaming stuff because just a PC. If, do you think PCs are better for editing? Is like a desk? Do you use a desktop or a laptop? Because when I do something on my laptop, my laptop explodes. Yeah, I use my laptop right now, but it is frustrating. Like you know, I I, I would like to step it up too. I have I have never edited on a, a PC, but I I assume that like all the Adobe stuff is just as good on PC as it is on Mac. Um, I, I've loved Mac for a long time and it's only recently that I've, since I've heard that streaming is done much better on PC that I'm like, Oh, maybe I should dabble back into it. And I could do some basic stuff on the Mac because I'm used to it. And then I could do a, some a, like slightly more advanced stuff on this PC if I ever get one. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. I Twitch is awesome. All right. I have a few other like last few questions. So, we were talking about like TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. What would you say like your threshold for clips are? Like TikTok, th we know like three seconds of the attention span, but mm -hmm. do you try you try and have get like a TikTok up a day, multiple TikToks up a day? Like my like, if I were really doing TikTok right, I would be like, I think you should do like three TikToks a day, but that's hard. So really hard. I'll I'll admit that that's hard, but that's if you were like. I'm going to go all in on this. And I tried to do one TikTok a day for a week and that, that was hard for me. <laughs> um, but, you know, drop your standard a bit. Um, but I, 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 that's what I've been told. That's what I've heard that, you know, people who really crush, they don't worry about it. It's, it's a quantity thing. It's an algorithm thing. You post 15 in a week and probably one of them will go viral. And then, you know, so I actually was, I've been doing some crypto content on, on TikTok. And one of the things I did was, um, I just was like doing some curation. I was finding stuff that I was interested in 
in ripping it and and posting it and not and tagging people, not claiming it was me because it was Andrew Schultz when he was talking to Anthony. Um, he was talking to Pomp, and uh, and they just we were talking about some really interesting Bitcoin stuff that I I found super interesting. And I was like, in the early days of Twitter, this is what you do: you just reshare stuff that you found interesting. You wouldn't necessarily be like, I'm a creator, and everything I post, I make. Now I know that that's like. You know, somewhat frowned upon. You want to do your own original content, but I posted two the two of these clips in. I posted probably ten clips, and two of them, you know, one the the um, Andrew Schultz one did over a million, um, and then uh, the one with Choms did over six hundred thousand. And I like you know went from eight hundred TikTok followers to four thousand. So it's just like I just picked a, a a bunch of stuff, and none of the other stuff went viral. All the other stuff got like a thousand views. Um, but I just was like, let me, I'm going to post a lot of crypto content. Cause it was what I was interested in right then. Um, and instead of just being like, well, wait, how do I do origin? How do I do this? How do I do that? TikTok's kind of like the wild west. So I would do quantity over quality on TikTok right now and, and post as much on whatever topic you're doing. Um, whether it's edited promos or just you holding the phone and just getting some firing off takes right now on TikTok, I would do quantity over quality, realizing that not all of them are going to work. But if you do find a little niche for yourself, that TikTok is the best place to stumble upon that. Yeah, we just at the site, we just started rolling out our own TikTok stuff, trying to get some, trying to build some traction with that. But yeah, I would pick a niche on TikTok and, and like stick to it, like just be like, this is where I do this. And, you know, um, and, and just like cover that really, really thoroughly. Would you consider a podcast uh, a niche or like, or had to like podcast clips a niche, or would it be like a inside of the podcast talking about a specific like sports or what? What was the podcast about? So, I was really hoping you'd ask that question. <laughs> I don't have a great answer. Well, so that's what I'm saying is tough, especially on yeah. TikTok. Like, like I would pick one thing that you're really you that you talk a lot about on the podcast. Like, so I talk about all sorts of things. But right now on TikTok, I'm trying to post more crypto and NFT stuff because I am interested in that. I'm sticking with that. I could also po- decide like I'm going to make my TikTok Marvel MCU content because I really like that stuff and I want to stick to it. I, I could do, I-, I have a super producer TikTok and that has sort of fallen off. I just haven't done enough there, but I could do podcast tips. I would consider that a niche. I consider the Mets a niche. I could, you know, like you could, you could just, you could do baseball. Like it can be a broad thing but you could be like when people come here oh i get it it's baseball content you know and and and, you know you don't have to do that there are people who are just like you know they fall under these bigger buckets like it's just comedy oh these are funny you know so i'm gonna you know do it here oh this is sketch comedy it's that you know but i would pick something and be like this is fairly if you if you don't have just like a really hysterical mind and you're like oh i'm always writing these little skits i would pick a topic and just you know focus on that and that's a good i think that's a good way to build up tiktok Sweet. Thank you. Um, I was pretty much it. I mean, yeah, the rest of it was just going to be like, um, like, I, like, how do I, 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 my, I don't know how to say this, like, in a not weird way, but like, yeah. literally, my dream has been to work at Barstool. I don't know if you saw, but like, I DM'd you in 2017. I've been following <laughs> since well, well before that. And like, yeah. And, I, you know, so Kelly Martin went to the same school that I did. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, doing everything I, you know i did all the dms i was like you know what like fuck it everyone says enough like just do it on your own and see what happens and that's kind of like i, I don't know if it's, it's like definitely a gonna, approach it's, it's it's so much different now because like you said it's a bigger company and there's more yeah. formal stuff but i just feel like there you have to like find a way to because you know they get thousands of applicants in the first 10 minutes right, and it's right. like how it's how do i differentiate myself and so i figured i this just think doing you that. know the the best I think the best platforms right now to grow on are TikTok and YouTube. So if you can, you know, focus on those, make a lot of content there, keep doing your podcast, but use your podcast to make this other content and put in these different places. Um, and then it's hard. I mean, like, like I said, the good thing about Barstool now is that it's, is a little bit more traditional. We will just like have a job opening. We will just like post something, but then from there, you know, if you can look at, a creator out there and say, how can I help this guy? Like, can I re-edit something that he's already done? Like, you know, some of the newer guys that are just joining here, like, you know, like Doug's and, and Mincy and, um, and like Frank the tank, like, I don't know, like, can you re-edit, can you make like a super clip 
of some of the things that they're they're doing and maybe get a retweet from them can you do an animated version of one of them like you know um or, or even one of the veterans like if you can if you can you know learn after effects and take some one of the old clips of dave saying what an idiot what a fucking idiot and like re-edit it so it looks really cool there's there's ways to get attention but yeah it's hard because there's a lot of people out there trying but you know like again like i said nobody would have thought like hey you know what mckenzie should do like go and and do these lip dubs of spit and chiclets and 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 kfc radio and and, and dave and stuff like that and it just worked. So you just got to like keep thinking along those lines of like, what's next, what's new, what's different while still, you know, refining your, your repertoire of like being able to produce a podcast, being able to, um, you know, uh, be like a behind the scenes guy. Um, and then, you know, it's tough. It's like, I, I wouldn't just limit yourself just to Barstool. Barstool is definitely like the coolest and most interesting and cutting edge, but there are a lot of good companies out there to work for. And then, you know, you get, you get a little, you, you build your resume at another company that'll help when something comes up and, uh, and you got to keep passing that resume around. It's, it's weird because Barstool is like a little bit more of a traditional sort of company in that respect. I do have one last <laughs> question for you. Um, yeah. So the YouTube shtick that you guys do, it's not even a shtick. It is, it is so funny, but, <laughs> and it's, First of all, KFC and fucking fight smashing Gibson's laptop yesterday was great. <laughs> but how, how much do you think that like YouTube is just kind of like setting you guys up for failure with like the lack of promotion and, and like how? So the the real like not the rule, but like the idea is like the, they don't really promote cursing, they don't monetize cursing and all that like stupid stuff, and it's like harder to like, get pushed up in their algorithm. Do you think that's part of it, or do you think like? Just for some reason, stories don't yeah, have to subscribe. No, I don't think it's like I don't think it's YouTube's responsibility to promote us, or or I, I think you know you just you kind of have to take. It's like a sports analogy. It's like take what the defense gives you. Like we're you know taking some um, like podcast content and putting it on YouTube, and then very slowly making some YouTube content and and sometimes potentially putting it on a podcast or sometimes just leaving it on YouTube. But like, you know, a lot of these people are kicking our ass in YouTube because they're thinking about YouTube first. They're like, let's make YouTube content and then put it in other places where we are thinking about putting our other stuff in YouTube and then occasionally thinking about um, YouTube first. I think we need to get better at that and create the water more test YouTube. yesterday. Yeah. I, I, I was, right. I was that, that, that's YouTube. I, I literally, that's, I literally that's, have that's to that, comments yeah. yesterday. I was, I stopped on Spotify. I was like, all right, yeah. comment. I, you know, right. first time I, and like we're the getting there. there. Mm-hmm. And the guys, you know, like, you know, they, they come around on it and they're like, they start thinking that they're the, they're the really creative people. Um, they're the really funny people. And, but you got to get them in that mode because they've been thinking in podcast mode for so long. And now you're like, okay, pretend podcasts don't exist. Pretend Barstool is back to the Milton days. And the thing that is blowing up and making people rich is YouTube. What would you do visually? How would you get on camera and do this and film this? And how would you get it to blow up? Um, and how would you get our, our audience excited about it? And we're getting there, but, but it's a different, it's a pivot. It's, it's like we're moving in a different direction, but I don't think it's up to, to YouTube to make, uh, you know, like we gotta, we gotta, it's a tool, you know? It's like, it's not like it's supposed to do something for us that, we're, and you know it's not doing it for some reason it's just like that that's how the tool works you have to figure out you, you know yeah i guess i through i see it through the gaming lens because our, like guys like nick Merckx, who are obviously part of the sports book now but you know they've been doing twitch and youtube forever um and their youtube videos in the last year have done crazy different because they made a gigantic pivot you know they do introductions now i, I don't know if you watch any of their stuff but and they they take out all the cursing they do and now they're getting 500,000 views uh you know a day yeah and, well what's tough for youtubers is when youtube changes the rules so like you know nick Merckx, these guys have been doing youtube forever i understand their frustration with it i understand them being like you know listen we build all in this direction facebook did it to us too facebook was like very publisher heavy like we want publishers to make more more content and then they switched up their algorithm and they were like no it's not about that anymore it's about like groups and you're like all right great guys like you know we've been building this because you told us that that's what you wanted so i get it when you're like a professional youtuber um and and you have been playing by the rules and then they change the rules like now i, I get that it's oh youtube has always sort of like been slightly like 
angled for for kids and the cursing. I mean, cursing is such a stupid thing that, that people care about, but I get that they care. So about it. dumb. I, I but, deal with but it a lot like, too. but that's what I'm saying. It's a tool. Like they they they're like, this is how you use this tool. It's not how you know, and it, it involves not cursing. So sorry, like you know, deal with it. And it's just like, okay, do you want to continue to be a YouTuber? There will be you know an alternative to YouTube at some point, and uh, you know maybe it's Instagram, IGTV, maybe. It, Facebook comes back around and maybe that's the next new thing. The thing that this is just like, you can say whatever you want and there's easier access to it and people love it and it'll blow YouTube out of the water. Uh, or maybe YouTube will adjust and say like, listen, this is, there's a YouTube for adults and there's a YouTube for kids and it's different. And uh, you know, but I, I get, I get the guys that have built themselves up on YouTube and then YouTube switches the rules when, you know, they've made YouTube a lot of money too. So I get, if you have an established audience and then YouTube goes and changes the rules for us, it's like, you know, we want YouTube to play our game. You know, we're podcasters and we want our podcast clips to go super viral. It's like, well, you know, that's, you know, you got to play YouTube's game where it's like, make something good for YouTube first. And then maybe your podcast clips will do really well. But we're figuring out it's trial and error. You know, we're not like, just because Barstool's successful doesn't mean like we know how to do every single thing perfectly. It's funny because like my, um, my outside friends that come they're like they aren't as familiar with barstool and they only see their clips on youtube they're like but i don't think i don't think they're that big like their numbers aren't big on youtube it's like well like youtube doesn't the, I, yeah. I, I, I thought i had to we're, do it like, we're a little yeah. bit late to the game yeah but meanwhile you guys have been around forever you, you're, you're i've been yeah. the youtube channel since like 2012 or 2013 like it's been there well, yeah it started it, it, ks3 yeah. just started on youtube but we you know we went a different direction for a very long time I really appreciate your time. It was, this cool, was awesome. It um, was fun.